the weapon of horrible tempest, there are weapons, and there are weapons, when God uses the weapon of horrible tempest demonic agents are in trouble, horrible tempests can be described as a destructive wind or an evil blast, it is a type of wind that will suffocate and destroy the enemy of your freedom, evil powers are able to carry out their activities when there is no threat, but, when the tempest of the Almighty threatens them they would release their victims, when the Bible describes a weapon as horrible, it will surely spread tragedy across the camp of the enemy, there is a time in spiritual warfare when the only way the enemies can be forced to turn back is when we issue a cry that will be transformed into a terrible tempest, Psalm 56 verse 9 When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back, this I know, for God is for me, frighten the enemy. When you understand the deep meaning of spiritual warfare you will discover that the devil deserves no pity or mercy, the enemies who raise satanic storms against you deserve being stomped and horrified by the tempest of the Almighty, Psalm 11 verse 6 Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and in horrible tempest, this shall be the portion of their cup, when the rain of divine judgment falls from heaven and the terrifying wind from heaven blows against your foundational bondage, the enemy shall be petrified, God can use any method to disgrace the enemy and set his children free, to confuse the powers that are holding you in bondage, God can introduce a storm in a cup and make the enemy to stagger like a drunkard, there is no method God cannot use when your victory or deliverance is at stake, this is a season of vengeance. God is set to unleash terror upon the enemy. The tempest is so violent that it will blow off every power behind your problem. Beloved, a million winds may be unnoticed, but a horrible tempest will bring devastating consequences that will remain indelible. Tackle the enemy. A lot of God's children are busy going about with the victim mentality. The moment you begin to invoke horrible tempest from heaven, the spirit of terror will grip household witchcraft, foundational powers and powers behind terrible curses and covenants, we live in a terrible local environment where evil is perpetrated with reckless abandon, we, therefore, need uncommon weapons of spiritual warfare and deliverance, God has not created special weapons for them to lie fallow and unused, the environment in which we live is dangerous, I am sure you know that the enemy has his own evil wind, this wind has made many blind, crippled multitudes, and paralyzed promising destinies, the only way out is to tackle the enemy fire for fire, when the enemy comes like a flood, you must raise prayer points that will act like horrible tempest that will steer away the evil tide, when stubborn enemies vow to make your life miserable, stand up and confront them with your weapon of horrible tempest, prayer points, 1, O oh horrible tempest, arise and trouble every warfare waged against my life, in the name of Jesus, 2, horrible tempest from the Lord, march in your fury to pursue my pursuers, in the name of Jesus, 3, Father, let the horrible tempest be released upon every evil gathering summoned to trouble me, in the name of Jesus, 4, Father let the horrible tempest be released to secure my portion in the land of the living, in the name of Jesus, 5, every cleverly concealed warfare, assigned against me be scattered by the horrible tempest from the Lord in the name of Jesus, 6, every storm of darkness assigned against me, let the horrible tempest from the Lord scatter the tempest, in the name of Jesus, 7, O God, arise with your horrible tempest and scatter every wicked association designed against my life, in the name of Jesus, the weapon of fire, this is one of the most terrible weapons given to us by God in order to enjoy resounding victory, the fire of God is an uncommon weapon, when this weapon is used God throws, as it were, the totality of his strength into our battles, the Bible makes it clear, time and again, that God is a consuming fire. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God, Deuteronomy 9 verse 3 Understand therefore this day, that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee, as a consuming fire he shall destroy them, and he shall bring them down before thy face so shalt thou drive them out, and destroy them quickly, as the Lord hath said unto thee, Heb 12 29 For our God is a consuming fire, a weapon of fire when God goes into battle, he comes with fire as his weapon of war, 
in the spiritual realm fire is more potent than any gun that can be used on the field of battle, when God throws balls of fire into the camp of the enemy, the enemy is in trouble, the forces of darkness will abandon their inferior weapons and flee, the fire of God is an irresistible warfare weapon, it consumes the horse and its rider, it will burn to ashes the ranks and files of the army of darkness, the weapon of fire has been created by God to consume and exterminate the power of the enemy, the consuming fire of God does not deal halfway with the enemy, this weapon spreads terror and tragedy in the enemy's camp like a wildfire, note the scripture, Deuteronomy 9 verse 3 understand therefore this day, that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee, as a consuming fire he shall destroy them, and he shall bring them down before thy face, so shalt thou drive them out, and destroy them quickly, as the Lord hath said unto thee, the consuming fire, as a consuming fire, he shall destroy them, the function of the consuming fire of God is total destruction, most of the time, it is the remnants of the enemy's forces that form and trouble among God's children, but, when you make use of the weapon of the consuming fire, you will completely wipe out wicked powers in such a way that the memory of them will be gone, when God gets involved with your warfare or when the Almighty decides to carry out your deliverance, he often makes use of the weapon of fire, the Bible makes it clear that when God is on the move fire accompanies him, Psalm 18 verse 12 13 at the brightness that was before him his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire, the Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire, the Bible states categorically that fire announces the presence of God, Sham 18-8 there went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured, coals were kindled by it, Psalm 50-3 our God shall come, and shall not keep silence, a fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him, no wonder the psalmist invoked burning coals of fire upon the enemy, Psalm 140 verse 10 let burning coals fall upon them, let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again, God cares about his children, that is why the Bible says that he who touches us touches the apple of God's eyes, any power that confronts you is preparing his obituary, the Bible says, Psalm 11 to 6 upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and an horrible tempest, this shall be the portion of their cup, the rain of fire, here, we are told that God can rain fire upon the territory of the enemy, God did it in the book of Genesis, Gen, 19:24. then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, God is ever ready to pour liquid fire upon the head of any power confronting his children. Ezekiel 38 hours 22 minutes and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him, and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, an overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire, and brimstone, to deal with the enemy when the battle gets heated up, you can rain fire upon your stubborn pursuers, Psalm 11 colon 6 upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and an horrible tempest this shall be the portion of their cup, acidic prayers, there are certain prayer points that are so acidic that immediately you make use of them the fire of God will begin to burn the powers that have held you in captivity, the weapon of the fire of God must be used for tough battles, you must make use of this weapon when the powers that have captured you have vowed that they will never let you go, this weapon is needed when you want to be free from the activities of marine witchcraft, you need this weapon when you want to put an end to foundational bondage, the weapon of the fire of God will grant you immunity and make eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood become so confused that they will begin to eat their own flesh and drink their own blood, for unchallengeable victory, this is the weapon you must use, prayer points 1, Father, you are a consuming fire, arise in your fire and trouble every troubler of my life, in the name of Jesus, 2, O fire of God, fall upon every satanic prophet troubling my life, in the name of Jesus, 3, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Arise in your fire and fight for me, in the name of Jesus, 4, fire of God arise, burn to ashes every plantation of darkness, in the name of Jesus, 5, O fire of God, arise and shake down every citadel of darkness and burn them to ashes, 
in the name of Jesus 6, by fire by force, let my portion be released, in the name of Jesus, 7, O God that answereth by fire, answer my prayers by fire, in the end. The weapon called the rebuke of the Lord, the weapon we are going to examine in this section is a very powerful weapon, one of the weapons we can make use of in our battles is the weapon that comes out of the mouth of the Lord, the voice of the Lord drives the sound of terror to the ears of the enemy, when God speaks thunder strikes the enemy, when God declares judgment, the enemy shivers, the voices of the Lord will capture satanic arrows and them make them go back to center. The rebuke of the Lord will invoke destruction upon the enemy, Psalm 104-7 At thy rebuke they fled, at the voice of thy thunder they hasted away, when God rebukes, the enemy flees, when the Almighty rebukes, the association of witches and wizards scatter, when you declare the Lord rebuke thee, stubborn pursuers will flee, the rebuke of the Lord can be likened to an atomic bomb, it will vomit fire upon the head of the powers behind your bondage. The rebuke of the Lord comes with terrible judgment, when God rebukes, the power of your father's house will let you go, the rebuke of the Lord will heap coals of fire upon the enemy's head, a power deliverance weapon, at the rebuke of the Almighty your captives shall flee, your enemies shall quickly set you free no matter how tough the battle is, no matter how deep bondage appears the rebuke of the Lord will set you free, even the captives of the terrible shall be released. This weapon is loaded with the anointing that will make the enemy to be thrown into panic and release you instantly, God has given us this weapon so that powers that are operating here and there will discover that your case is different, enough is enough the rebuke of the Lord must sound in the camp of the enemy, a single rebuke from the Almighty will force Pharaoh to declare that he is ready to let you go, if you are tired of being a constant victim of satanic attacks you must activate the rebuke of the Lord. If you are tired of being insulted by elemental powers, simply make use of the weapon of the rebuke of Lord, the result is that Satan will tremble, evil powers will somersault and die and the enemy will never toy with you again, enough is enough battles are best fought with this weapon. The rebuke of the Lord is a weapon the enemy cannot withstand, unfortunately, this weapon has been lying fallow in the armory of the Lord. When you invoke divine rebuke upon the enemy the result will completely drive demonic soldiers away from the field of battle. Prayer points. 1. Father, rebuke every storm contending with my life, in the name of Jesus. 2. Father, rebuke every association contending with my destiny, in the name of Jesus. 3. Father, let the rebuke of the Lord go forth and arrest all my arresters and put to shame every power mocking my prayers in the name of Jesus, for, O God, arise and rebuke every satanic angel assigned against my destiny, in the name of Jesus, 5, let the rebuke of the Lord work to defend my interest, in the name of Jesus, 6, every principality that is against my destiny, let the rebuke of the Lord trouble them, in the name of Jesus Christ, the weapon called the fan of the Lord, God has destined us to win unchallengeable victory in spiritual warfare to ensure that uncommon victory is ours. He has created and given us certain strange weapons, there is no way we will not achieve victory if these powerful weapons are used, our God is the greatest warrior, hence, his weapons are superior to any form of weapon used by the enemy, the secret of spiritual warfare is this, as long as you continue to use the right weapons for the right battle or warfare wherever the battle is fought you are the number one person whose name would be listed as people who have achieved victory. The weapon we are considering here, is the weapon of the fan of the Lord, the weapon that scatters, there is a fan of the Lord that blows the enemy unto destruction. The working of this weapon is strange, when the enemy wages war against you or when plans are made to perpetuate your bondage or fortify a cage in order to hold you captive the Lord comes with this strange weapon, beloved, it works in a very strange manner, Isaiah 41 hours 16 minutes thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel, the onslaught of the enemy is carried out in this manner. A divine fan starts to blow against the enemy and a violent wind begins to carry them away, then, a divine whirlwind is ushered in to finish the work by scattering them unto desolation, with the full operation of this weapon. 
the powers that have fought against you will not be able to come together and launch another attack having being scattered by the divine whirlwind, God uses the fan as a weapon of emptying the camp of the enemy, Jeremiah 51-2 and will send unto Babylon fanners, that shall fan her, and shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about, divine fanners, God blows the enemy away like chaff. The fan of the Lord will also spread calamity throughout the enemy's camp, Jeremiah 15 verse 7 And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land, I will bereave them of children, I will destroy my people, since they return not from their ways, God knows what befits the powers that are holding you under bondage, the Almighty has declared and I will fan them with a fan. The fan of the Lord is a fitting weapon for stubborn pursuers, when the enemy refuses to turn back and you issue a cry of vengeance against him, your prayer will become the fan of the Lord and you shall destroy them. The destructive weapon, you need to use this weapon when a network of evil powers is behind your bondage or battles. The fan of the Lord will come like a whirlwind and blow off all the enemies no matter how numerous they are, when you declare saying, O thou fan of the Lord blow away the association of dark agents that are behind my attacks. They will be blown away and their agenda will be frustrated, the fan of the Lord is violent. The fan of the Lord is destructive. The fan of the Lord is deadly, no power from the pit of hell can withstand it, when you begin to use the weapon of the fan of the Lord you will discover that your prayers will become a terror to the kingdom of darkness, use this weapon today and you shall experience resounding victory. Prayer points 1. Let the fan of the Holy Ghost blow against every evil wind working against my life, in the name of Jesus too, let the wind that carries fire emanate from the fan of the Lord and scatter the camp of the oppressor, in the name of Jesus, 3, thou fan of the Lord, blow away every satanic plantation in the garden of my life, in the name of Jesus, 4, thou fan of the Lord, blow away every yoke of the oppressor militating against my life in the name of Jesus Christ, the weapon called plague, when God acts decisively on the field of battle, no power can withstand him, there are tough battles that must be fought with tough weapons, the reason why many people struggle with problems that resist prayer is because they have not tackled the enemy with tough weapons, we are fighting an enemy that has grown thick skin and will not easily respond when minimal or elementary efforts are made, there are methods that will not suffice on the field of deliverance, there is no way you can confront the enemy that has fortified himself with a weak pat on the back, to defeat the enemy who has a track record of surfacing and putting up new appearances from time to time, you need weapons that will announce your desperation, you need weapons that will portray the might of God and the aggression of the Most High, you must, therefore, make use of a weapon that will spread calamity and casualties throughout the length and breadth of the camp of the enemy. One of such weapons is the weapon of the plague. There is what is referred to as the weapon of the plague, a regime or plagues. When God decides to plague your enemy with a great plague, that is the end of the discussion. No power can collide with great plagues and remain the same. When great plagues from the Almighty fall upon the powers that are holding you captive they will be ground to powder. When the camps of the enemy receive the visitation of great plagues no power will remain alive to tell the story. When God rolls out the regime of plagues, nobody will be able to contend with the terror, when pestilence is poured upon the head of unrepentant Pharaoh, tragedy will litter his camp, when God introduces a plague, the manifestations are diverse, your enemies will become God's enemies, those who have been trying to destroy you will knock their heads on the rock of ages, strange tragedies, God can go any length to defend his interest in your life. When God decides to send a plague into Pharaoh's court anything can happen, the enemy will begin to witness strange tragedies and mysterious occurrences, when this begins to happen, Pharaoh will open the door and allow you to come out of the house of bondage, Exodus 10 verse 7 to 11 And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God, knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? and Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go, serve the Lord your God, but who are they that shall go? And Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds will we go, 
for we must hold a feast unto the Lord, and he said unto them, Let the Lord be so with you, as I will let you go, and your little ones, look to it, for evil is before you, not so, go now ye that are men, and serve the Lord, for that ye did desire, and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence, Sham 105 hours 14 minutes he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, a plague comes as a result of terrible judgment, some enemies will not allow you to go until they begin to suffer great plagues, when the effect of the plague begins to bite the enemy, those who are fighting against you will be subjected to carrying out useless assignments that will force them to release you, the weapon of divine plague is a weapon you must use if you want your victory to be quick and decisive, prayer points, 1, God, arise and send your plagues after the order of Egypt to the lives of my stubborn pursuers, in the name of Jesus, 2, Father, release your plagues upon every enemy that does not want to let me go, in the name of Jesus, 3, Father, release your plagues upon every govern discussing my matter, in the name of Jesus, 4, Father, release your plagues upon every evil association gathered to suppress me, in the name of Jesus, 5, Father, release your plagues upon all who are sitting on my breakthroughs, in the name of Jesus, 6, Father, release your plagues upon all those whom the kingdom of darkness has assigned to make my destiny sink, in the name the weapon of pestle ants, I have stated, time and again, that the only language which the enemy understands is the language of holy violence, aggressive powers need to be handled aggressively, terrible powers can only shift grounds when terrible weapons land on their head, beloved, there is no denying the fact that the enemy has switched to an abnormal gear, these days, witches fly in broad daylight, mothers, chew their children, and members of the political class are made to pound day old babies in the mortar just to obtain power, which doctors go on air to advertise their power and display their wares, there is a proliferation of black and white witches, the atmosphere has been polluted and communities are bewitched by powerful fetish priests and occult masters, demonic activities have reached a bizarre dimension, God is in search of violent end time soldiers who will rise up gallantly and turn the tables, intensive warfare, beloved, the answer is that we must march into the armory of the almighty and bring out tough weapons of spiritual warfare, there are people who may never experience total deliverance until they take further steps in spiritual warfare and begin to handle strange battles with strange weapons, to succeed in this dimension, we must learn how to make use of the weapon of pestilence, when we want to handle a particular weapon, we must examine the credentials of the manufacturer, the Bible says in Exodus 15-3 the Lord is a man of war, the Lord is his name, God is the greatest warrior that this world has ever known, Psalm 24-8 Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, beloved, the truth is that God does not make weapons and abandon them, he is a warrior, Reverend, 1911 And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war, any weapon that has been manufactured by God is for a purpose, God does not joke with his weapons, he knows the particular goal that his weapons will accomplish, the weapon of pestilence is a weapon of destruction, Exodus 5-3 And they said, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us, let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence, or with a sword, casualties galore, pestilence is not a weapon that can descend upon the enemy and there will be no noticeable casualty, in one instance, in the scripture, God sent pestilence and seventy thousand people died, 1 Cornices 21 14 so the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men, the Bible describes a category of pestilence as noisome, in other words, this kind of pestilence will create negative waves, Psalm 91-3 Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence, a vehicle of destruction, the purpose of pestilence is to destroy, it is a vehicle for conveying divine judgment, those who are attacked by this weapon will reap destruction, this weapon must be used to attack the spirit of Pharaoh. It is a fitting weapon for the power of Herod, 
you need to make use of this weapon when you are swimming against the tide and powers that bite without remnant, and they are almost swallowing you up, when pestilence descends upon the enemy evil powers will let you go, demons that have swallowed your virtue will vomit it, your victory will remain unchallenged and your testimony will be overwhelming, prayer points 1, let the power of pestilence arise and swallow my swallowers, in the name of Jesus, 2, thou power of pestilence, arise and fight against every yoke of the enemy, in the name of Jesus, 3, thou power of pestilence, pursue my pursuers, in the name of Jesus, 4, thou power of pestilence, torment and oppress my oppressors, in the name of Jesus, 5, thou power of pestilence, eat into the bones and the marrows of wickedness, in the name of Jesus 6, thou power of pestilence, move in your mysterious power and disappoint the devices of the crafty, in the name of J, the weapon of the net of the Lord, as long as you are not ready to languish in ignorance, the enemy shall not overcome you, there is no weapon you will ever need to fight your battles and obtain victory that cannot be found in the word of God, we serve a God who is a man of war, and specializes in making use of diverse weapons, he can make use of fire, lightning thunder, stones, the atmosphere, their rain, mysterious blasts and complex weapons, God has manufactured and made ready for our use specific weapons that are tailor made to enable us obtain victory in our areas of challenges, when you use the right weapon, victory, liberty, deliverance and breakthroughs will be yours, the beauty of spiritual warfare is that God has not created any power he cannot tame or arrest, powerful weapons, God has lots of weapons and a warfare manuals for every battle mankind will ever fight, the survival strategy for this end time is to locate the right weapon and fight all manner of battles emanating from the kingdom of darkness, prophetic warfare thrives on your ability to come against the enemy with a suitable weapon, as long as you are making use of the right weapon, there is no need to struggle before you overcome the enemy, the use of right weapon unleashes upon you the anointing of ease which will make you an overcomer in every spiritual warfare session, the net, the net of the Lord is a weapon given unto us by God for specific areas of warfare, when God wants to capture stubborn runaway enemies he will use the weapon of the divine net, Ezekiel 12 verse 13 my net also will I spread upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon to the land of the Chaldeans, yet shall he not see it, though he shall die there, Ezekiel 17 verse 20 and I will spread my net upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon, and will plead with him there for his trespass that he hath trespassed against me, Hosea 7 verse 12 when they shall go, I will spread my net upon them, I will bring them down as the fowls of the heaven, I will chastise them, as their congregation hath heard, arresting the arrester, the net is an instrument for subjecting the enemy to the same captivity which he has schemed for God's people, it is wonderful to behold a great company of people who have been arrested through the use of the divine net, this is a weapon that God uses when he sets out to capture a network of evil powers, this is a weapon of mass destruction, it is a weapon that has continued to baffle the enemy as a result of its ability to overshadow and capture a mass of enemies who believe that they can escape the anger of the Almighty, when God decides that the enemy's cup of iniquity has become full and it is time to capture and subject the enemy to shameful defeat, he spreads a net, of course, when the net is spread it will capture an entire company of agents of the pit of hell. This is the weapon you need to make use of when you have discovered that it is time for God to round off the enemy in a net and throw them into the fire of God's judgment, prayer points 1, my father, attack my attackers with the net of fire, in the name of Jesus, 2, O heavens, fish out every strange power in charge of my case by your net, in the name of Jesus, 3, O heavens, command your net to possess my possessions, in the name of Jesus. 4. My Father, use your net of fire to restore my stolen stars, in the name of Jesus. 5. O net of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, pursue my pursuers, in the name of Jesus. 6. Holy Ghost and blood of Jesus defend me by your net of fire, in the name of Jesus. 7. O Lord, dispatch your violent angels with their net to disgrace my disgrace, 
in the name of Jesus to be used when you want to invoke God's anger upon associations of satanic agents, IT can be used to destabilize the mission of stubborn pursuers, IT is a powerful weapon to be used to disgrace and paralyze satanic agents sent to steal your glory and swallow your virtue, IT is a powerful weapon for every power that has vowed that you will not be delivered, IT is a weapon to be used when you are dealing with powers that bite without any remnant. One of the toughest weapons which God has made available for effective spiritual warfare is the weapon of the indignation of God, there is a special weapon earmarked for seasons of victory, this is a fitting weapon for the enemy that will not let you go. The indignation of God is a weapon that the Almighty rarely brings out, this particular weapon has been designed to express to the fullest, the anger and fury of God, it is the weapon that shows no mercy, when this weapon is in use. There is no looking back, an eruption the purpose of this weapon is to totally consume and finish the enemy, this weapon has been manufactured with the intent of showing the enemy the eruption of God's anger like liquid fire in a volcano, the indignation of God is a weapon that pours out the entire content of God's anger against the enemy, when the weapon of indignation is taken out of God's armory the enemy camp is in trouble. This weapon will not be taken back until it is fully birthed with the blood of Pharaoh and all his soldiers, this is a weapon that shows the finality and severity of God's judgment, Ezekiel 22 31 Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them, I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God, a destructive weapon The nature of this weapon is that it is poured out like poisonous powder to wipe out the traces of the agents of darkness, this is a weapon we can use when the church is harassed and the anointed is insulted, it can be used when dark angels dare touch the anointed or do God's prophet any harm, the weapon of indignation of God stands for the pouring out of God's fury, Ezekiel 22 22 As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that it he Lord have poured out my fury upon you, a destructive storm when the weapon of indignation of God is used, heaven releases a destructive storm of calamity and tragedy, this weapon comes out of the breath of the Almighty when his anger is provoked, it is a deeply spiritual weapon, it is also a reward that fits the wicked, Ezekiel 20 colon 8 but they rebelled against me, and would not hearken unto me, they did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt, then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them, to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt, when the president of a powerful nation pours out his military might against another nation, atomic bombs could be used, nuclear warheads could be discharged and fighter jets could drop killer bombs upon the head of the populace, but that is how far the wrath of man can go, but when the Almighty pours out his fury, the result can be compared with what happens when silver is melted in hot furnace, this tough weapon may be what your enemy needs to leave you alone or let you go, the wicked powers of your father's house cannot be cajoled or appeased to leave you alone, the weapon of indignation of God is the language they understand, use this weapon today and your enemies will feel the full wrath of God's anger evil powers will tremble and let you go, prayer points 1, Father, arise in your indignation and pursue my pursuer, in the name of Jesus 2, let the power of your indignation put every digger of holes against my life into their holes, in the name of Jesus, 3, O indignation of the Most High God, arise and frustrate my enemies, in the name of Jesus, 4, let the fire of divine indignation arrest my arresters and contend with those who contend with me, in the name of Jesus, 5, O God, arise in your indignation and put to shame every power of the oppressor, in the name of Jesus, 6, O indignation of the Most High God, arise and possess my possessions for me, in the name of Jesus North Wind, T is a weapon to